everyone! So today is an e-learning day. That means that we are going to pretend like there is a snow day um, in event of a snow day after President's Day uh, in order to prevent going to school in June. We are going to have virtual days so that you can make up all of your schoolwork at home and we don't have to come in. So today we're pretending to go through the motions but you're here in school. So what that means is if you have any questions about um, this video or about the lecture or anything else, you have to message me on Schoology in order to get it taken care of. Now, if you need to go to the bathroom or need something else, then feel free to come up and talk to me at my desk. But for the purposes of today, pretend you're at home and the only way to access me is, access me is through uh, Schoology. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about exocrine versus endocrine and the different types of hormones, how we classify them and how they work. So you've already been introduced to the hormones and what they do and where they come from. So today we're going to go a little bit more in depth as to um, how we categorize them and how they do the things they do. So, exocrine versus endocrine. This is classified by where the secretion occurs. For an exocrine gland, this is going to be uh, secreting on either a surface or into the digestive system, which is also treated like the external environment. For endocrine, they are going to be released inside of the internal environment, which means the blood or in between the cells. So exocrine, normally through a tube or duct with the pancreas and its exocrine function with the digestive system going into the small intestine, there is a duct that takes those fluids from the pancreas to the small intestine. Same thing happens with um, sweat glands and all the other wonderful stuff that we learned in the integumentary chapter. Whereas the endocrine, this gets secreted into the internal environment, and that is frequently blood. So it helps regulate a lot of metabolic processes. As we've seen, it helps with the... Um, aid in moving of amino acids into cells so that they can build more proteins. It can speed up um, gluconogenesis, which is the formation of glucose, so it can raise blood sugar. And it can also regulate how much water and electrolytes you have in your body. So this is all done by the thymus, hypothalamus, uh, pineal, adrenal, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid glands. We've been looking at these a lot for the past week. So just giving a little bit more background, endocrine is everything that we've been looking at. Exocrine, we saw that a lot in the integumentary chapter. So the endocrine glands, uh, they can be cell tissue or really any organ, but their job is to be secreting hormones. Now these hormones are chemical messengers, very similar to neurotransmitters, but the big difference is that they can diffuse through the interstitial fluid, whether that be blood or even just um, a lot of that plasma left in between certain cells. The way that neurotransmitters are defined and the reason why the nervous system and the endocrine system are so different is because this nerve cell is talking directly with this nerve cell or neuron. Whereas an endocrine, this endocrine gland or cell or tissue will release the hormone and it will likely be dispersed into a large area. But throughout that large area, it's only going to um, stimulate its target cells. So those target cells are the ones that are waiting for the message. When they receive that hormone, that's when they create the response. So I mentioned this earlier with oxytocin in pregnant women. Oxytocin can be flowing through their body. It's going to go all the way into their pinky, it's going to go into their nose, it's going to go into their forehead, but it's not going to do anything there because it doesn't have the right target cells. It'll only do something where those target cells are in the uterus and to allow for that uterus to contract to push out the baby. Tropic hormones. Now, when we talked about the anterior pituitary, there were those four tropic hormones. What you need to know about these, and you will see these on your test, is that these are hormones whose target cell is another endocrine gland. So when we are talking about the hypothalamus being principal Shockley, me being the anterior pituitary, and then you guys being the thyroid, all of those hormones that then tell another gland to secrete, those are tropic hormones. So local hormones, 
These are ones that never reach the bloodstream. They go from one cell to a very nearby cell or the cell itself. So this is what defines paracrine. Para means nearby, so they're affecting the near neighbor cells, whereas the autocrine, auto means self, they're affecting only themselves. Prostaglandins, these are chemical messengers that only affect the things that are immediately around them, and it's not a certain gland that can secrete it. So the most frequent example is um, if I get a cut on my pinky. Prostaglandins are going to be released in my pinky and tell the blood vessels in my pinky to constrict. That way I'm not getting as much blood out of it. So the prostaglandins there, they are being secreted by this section for this section. And other examples of that, we've got childbirth, um, glaucoma, erectile dysfunction, once again, secreted by the organ or tissue for the organ or tissue. <sighs> so how are we going to classify all of these hormones? We've seen a tropic hormone is one that causes another gland to secrete something. But we can classify every single hormone that we've seen into two groups. The first one are cholesterol derivatives. So you may recall from um, our original unit with um, lipids and carbohydrates and proteins and nucleic acids that a lot of our lipids and steroids are derived from cholesterol. So cholesterol is that main um, hormone that then can get turned into all of these other subcategories, including testosterone, aldosterone, cortisol, all of those things that we've talked about. And if you want to check out up here, uh, there's a little bit of that biochemistry. You can see how the cholesterol is very similar in shape, and shape determines function. The second type of hormone is amino acid derivatives, and these can include amines, these can include proteins, anything that is along the lines of a protein. So we got the peptides, remember polypeptides make up proteins when they're folded properly, become a protein. So we've got epinephrine, norepinephrine, we've got aldosterone, we've got oxytocin, parathyroid hormones, growth hormones, all of those are amino acid derivatives. And then another one is the glycoprotein. Um, once again, amino acid derivative, and that's where FSH comes from, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. So all of the hormones that we have seen are either cholesterol derivative or amino acid derivative. So let's look at the cholesterol derivatives, otherwise known as the steroid hormones. Cholesterol, steroid, I need for you to think that those are synonymous right now. So characteristics. Steroids, they have to be carried through plasma proteins in the blood. They are not soluble in water, right? These are lipids. Lipids and water do not mix. Lipids are nonpolar, water is very polar, so it's like the oil on top of the water. So these steroids, they go through the blood system by those plasma proteins, and because they are made of lipids, just like cell membranes, they can diffuse into any cell at all, just pass right through the cell membrane, which then allows for the steroid to work inside the cell itself. So it will bind to a receptor inside of the cell, which then will activate either a specific part of DNA or RNA. It'll prevent something from being transcribed or promote something for being transcribed. And uh, the protein synthesis will be the end result. So examples of this, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone, uh, cortisol, these are all going to be promoting different proteins that are being built, and they do that by directly binding to the DNA and the transcription and translation machinery. Non-steroid hormones, once again, we've got the amino acid derivatives. So these are amines, peptides, proteins, anything that is amino acid related. And I've got a couple, this tyrosine over here, this is a amino acid epinephrine, very close in shape. This is, uh, an epinephrine is another word for um, adrenaline, which makes sense because epinephrine comes from the adrenal medulla. So characteristics, these are going to be activating proteins after the whole cellular process. Um, we've got the growth hormone, epinephrine, oxytocin. And what ends up happening is that our hormones, they bind on the outside of the cell. 
These are not made from lipids, so they cannot pass through the cell membrane. Uh, this binding will then cause uh, second messengers to go inside of the cell to then cause the change. So the non-steroid hormones, they attach to the outside because they cannot pass through. Then on the inside of that cell membrane, it gets the message and it goes through a series of events that then leads to that change within the cell. So how are all of these things controlled? Uh, they can be controlled by either increasing or decreasing uh, hormone secretion. Everything is extremely precise, as you guys noticed. A um, few days ago, you guys made one of these flow charts for me. You guys drew them all over your desks. Hopefully that helped. Everything within the endocrine system is extremely specific and very sensitive. So the stimulation of hormone release this can be um, negative feedback mechanisms, uh, like the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands when uh, high levels of uh, the thyroid hormones are present, then that's gonna stop the hypothalamus, that's gonna stop the release of the pituitary hormones. Um, the nervous system can, can prevent something or stimulate it. There can be a change in the internal environment. Uh, for example, if you're dehydrated, those osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus are going to sense it, and that's going to tell the posterior pituitary gland to release the um, antidiuretic hormone, ADH. And we can also have that inhibition of hormone release, once again, that negative feedback loop. I've mentioned negative feedback loop several times on this slide, and it's because you're going to see that on your test. You may have to come up with on, on your own or reference one and draw one and make it look all nice and neat and pretty. So we've seen this before. This is a common theme for tropic hormones. Once again, um, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. A tropic hormone being something that causes something else to stimulate. It's the um, inception of hormones. So the hypothalamus releases one hormone that causes the pituitary to release another one, which then causes the target gland like the thyroid to release yet another hormone and then these feedback loops negative feedback loops can either promote it if it's a positive feedback loop or stop it which we've seen a majority of as a negative feedback loop so here is a practice quiz I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds on this um, I'm going to go over to the next slide and show you these answers but for right now, uh, I would suggest that you look these over, write these answers down, pause this video. That way you um, have enough time before I turn over to the next slide to check your answers. All right, so I'm going to turn over the next slide. Make sure you pause it if you're not ready in three, two, one. Okay, there are your answers. If you don't get any of it, Maybe rewind the video, check that out, or you can message me on Schoology, but you're not allowed to raise your hand and ask me because it's a practice day. All right, we're going to do this one more time. Pause the video if you need to in three, two, one, and there are your answers. That is it for today. Um, I hope everything went well. Sorry I was playing some music in the background. It probably got pretty epic there for a second. Not sure if you guys could hear it or not. But if you have any questions, message me on Schoology. Um, now that you are done, on OneNote, and I'm going to show you guys this really quickly. On OneNote, there is a group, endocrine group work. I would like for you guys to go through and work as a table on these questions together. Now that you're finished with this video, as a table, go through, look at this. This video is only 15 minutes long, so you will have plenty of time with the rest of class.